Hi everyone, it's Jerry. I have an excellent game to share with you from the 2019 Tata Steel Chess India Rapid and Blitz event. This is a five minute game with a two second increment. On the white end, Magnus Carlsen, and he's playing against Dinglerin. So we have an e4, e5 game, Roy Lopez. And on this move six, the delayed exchange variation. Black takes away from the center. This guy is now ready to play. d3. If you go ahead and grab on e5 in this case, we're just exchanging pawns. Black can recapture. Capture on the e4 square. So once it's secure, now black must tend to e5 and does with knight d7, the beginning of a maneuver to the knight's favorite square, e6. Both sides will enjoy having a knight on these two squares. They work well. They coordinate well with the fixed pawns e4 and e5. From here, knight b to d2. Castles. a4 is met with a5. Black does not want to see this pawn get to a5. It can have a cramping effect on black's queenside structure. So it stopped cold. From here, b3, f6, and now knight to h4. Did you notice what just happened there? These little details. As soon as f6 is in and e5 is secure, this knight is no longer effective in restricting the knight. White now makes the decision to eye up a new square for the knight, tries to get this guy working on f5, and it also frees the way. For the f-pawn to advance. There's one thing about this position that sticks out to me, and it's the rooks. They don't yet function. Each side still needs, in other words, to create a pawn break. Nearby, there can be f4. Knight c5, knight f5, knight e6, and knight to c4. From here, b6, securing a5, and also we're ready to fiend the bishop. This is the unopposed bishop. And it's almost always a good idea, or rarely is a bad idea, I should say, to develop the unopposed bishop on the longest diagonal. From here we have knight takes bishop. This is considered a best move. It sort of grabbed my attention, this decision, because, you know, why, why exactly are you giving up the knight for bishop? This guy seems pretty good on f5. I think it's related to this idea where if you if you don't take the bishop right now, let's say play queen e2, it may be the case black doesn't give you a second chance to take that bishop. And now it may be the case these guys are sort of stepping on one another's toes. They're all competing for this great square e3, and only one of them could ever make use of it. And now white would have to wonder, where am I going with the knight after g6? Do I go forward? This may seem aggressive. But in a way, it could be not so well placed. Do I go back to g3? Okay, it could be that they're stepping on one another's toes. So he doesn't give black a second chance to save the bishop. He takes on this move 14. Queen takes knight. Knight e3. Mission accomplished for both knights. From here, g6. Cutting out a square. That leaves this diagonal a bit more weakened f6 is now a hole, we can say. So this is a move that, in a way, prompts white's reply to put the bishop on the long diagonal. Okay, it's x-raying a hole on f6, we might say. From here, c5. And now queen to d2. So one of the squares that is now available to white after c5 is the d5 square the knight could jump in there and it certainly seems appealing you land in black's camp you generate a threat what would black's reply be to knight to d5 i want to highlight this again the move played in the game is queen d2 if this knight hops in here the best reply is for the queen to go back home and I want to draw your attention to this position here because 
it's I think it may open your eyes to a new way to think about the game. Let's say in this position, now black follows up with the move they played in the game, queen to d2. If you're trying to sneak in f4, by the way, the knight will be kicked away from its defense of f4, and black would be winning a pawn. So let's say queen d2. Now we could see the point with the queen going back home. The knight is kicked with c3. The queen is watching over b6 from her home square. There's no knight takes pawn. The knight would be kicked back. And now watch how you could go ahead and, in a way, <laughs> it's going to sound weird, in a way, develop your bishop. How do you normally develop your queen bishop? By moving it so that the queen rook could move. Well, what if we switch that? A good move in this position is a rook lift to a7. Let's just say we have a, a sort of passing move in here. Rook a7 to g7, and with this last move, black has essentially developed the bishop. This is a productive piece. 99% of the time when we move a queen bishop, it is so that we can next develop the queen rook. Well, the queen rook has already developed. The queen bishop is now playing. It's not interfering with development. So it's an interesting way to maybe view development, this idea of c6, rook a7 to g7. This guy's playing. Okay, black has a good answer to knight to d5. Queen goes home. In the game, it's queen to d2. Bishop b7, rook a to e1, rook a to d8, and f3. We're 19 moves in. This is only a 35 move game. Here is Ding Lirin's brilliant idea in action. He goes for a king walk. King f7. Now, about 58 seconds was spent on this move. And Carlson's reply took him about a minute 20. Really cannot afford many more things like this for either side. Again, it's only a five-minute game, two-second increment. Where's the king headed? To the queen side. One, two, three, four. If the king could get to c8, that would be wonderful for black. Uh, Ding Lirin expressed after the game that he didn't see how else to improve his position. The rooks are pretty well placed. The bishop is good. Knight is good. So improving the king. It's going to take a long while. It's going to take four tempi. Does black have the time to get this in? Now, the things to consider before going for a king walk such as this. First of all, why is having the king over on c8 an improvement? Well, it's a healthier structure on the queen side. This right here ties in beautifully with the light square bishop. A dream setup for black would be to have the bishop on c6 and the king on b7. And when that arrangement is in, this pawn right here on c7 guards the king against rank checks. This guy here guards the king against file checks. And the bishop on c6 defends the king against diagonal checks. Additionally, this c5 pawn only adds to the king's defense. In some situations, if there's, let's say, a half-open c file, there's no sacrifice. So there's no moves like rook takes bishop to disrupt that formation. So it is a very strong safe haven for the black king to be on the queen side. Right here, it's weakened. After g6 is in there, we have an unopposed dark square bishop. It's safer on the queen side. Now, the bulk of his time thinking about this idea, I believe, is related to the timing. Do I have the time to get this maneuver in? It's quickly recognized that this is the superior side of the board for the king. What's going through his mind is likely, how might white interfere with this? Might there be a quick opening up of the position? Do I have under control the pawn breaks d4 and f4? Black does have a good grip 
over both. Notice the e5 pawn, c5 pawn, knight, rook, they all contribute to stopping the two key pawn breaks, f4 and d4. This is the best move in the position, king f7. White has to come up with something fast against this idea and so shifts the queen towards the king side and tries to quickly put pressure on these dark squares to put uh, to try and interfere with this plan and at this point feels compelled to give up some material just to open the, open the position and gain access to the weakest point in black's camp f6 f4 is played Knight takes f4. Computer at this stage suggests best play is g3, followed by the doubling of the rooks. Not easy to follow up in this way. Carlson feels like it's best to give up even more material, give up the exchange, and go after f6. From here we have g5, queen h6, maintaining pressure on f6. King e6, or excuse me, queen e6. Knight takes f6, check. King to c1. I want to pause for a moment. Take note of this position right here. Is there anything that sticks out to you about this position? I don't want to say anything more. We're soon going to revisit this after I complete going through the game. Okay, we're going to revisit this. Just curious what maybe sticks out to you about it. In the game, we have queen takes g5. This is where it starts to go way downhill for white. There's an idea that was missed. Considered better is rook to f1, which keeps a very close eye on the f pawn. After queen takes g5, an excellent move, f3 is played. And what's the story here? Trying to disrupt the pawn duo. If white takes on f3, the g-file is now opened, and the queen and king are on it. So black would be able to follow with rook g8. Rook takes knight, give back a little bit of material, but you're going to be getting it back. You're going to be getting the queen, or if white doesn't want to give up the queen, they'd have to go into a self-pin, and that, will, that would be taken advantage of with queen to d7, and the bishop is soon going to fall. Black will be up a bishop. So, white does not bite on f3. Plays rook f1. Rook g8 still giving back the material in order to get the rook on g2 with check. Have to be careful. Don't go all in right here as black with queen h3. Queen h3 ducking the queen exchange. Well, you're going to get mated. So, queen g6, forming a battery, also with an eye in defense. From here, h4, there's really not much you can do as white. He's trying to, with this last move, challenge the queen post. Uh, some other move like rook to c1, well, that's not any fun. Maybe setting the pawn like this. Black could continue with f2, and there's not a good answer to rook to g1. So, what's played is h4, and we're almost there with our dream setup. One move here, bishop to c6. Look at this pocket. The king in this game never ends up arriving on b7, but it's only ever one move out. The square is now open for the king. The bishop also stops any check which means this queen is now ready to slip into g4 and h3. We don't need the queen to defend, to defend our own king at this point. We're ready to go all in for this mating attack. White defends that with queen f4. Rook takes pawn. Rook g1, rook g2. You can't take the rook. It's going to be mate. The bishop is also hit. In the game, we have queen e3. If white tries something else, such as rook to b1, I want to highlight a few variations from here. 
that black could go forward with, you can start with rook g4. And if white gets tries to get the queens off like this, we can exchange queens, follow up with the discovered check, another check. Don't go here, you're going to get hit with the double check. King h3, rook g1, black will be promoting very soon. Some other line is this one right here. After rook g4, queen h2, defending rook takes h4, black can sacrifice the bishop. And now, look at all the threats that are there. Hitting the rook, setting up a skewer, setting up a discovered check. White doesn't have an answer to that. And finally, if black plays a move like queen f6, we would have a mate in two with a clearance sacrifice. Get out of the way, rook, because we want to get into g2 for mate. So this one played out with queen e3 simply defending rook takes rook. One final move, queen g3, white resigns. What do you do? How do you stop one, two, three, four mate in ones? You don't. So this is a very nice game, and I want to go back to this move or this one position where I said, is there anything that sticks out to you? So that is this position right here. This grabbed my attention in preparing for this video and going through this game. Is there a way to improve upon this plan by black? How did we get to where we currently are here with the king on c8 and rook on d8? How many moves did it take in this game? Well, there was castles, that's one. Rook d8, two. And then the king maneuver, three, four, five, six. Is this arrangement maybe possible in just one move? This is exactly where these pieces end up when you do what? Queenside castle. I'm not saying that black can save five moves, or maybe I am. <laughs> is it possible to get this arrangement in some cases in just one move? Can this be improved upon? If we go back to this position right here, the first moment where black made the decision to castle, may it may make some sense for you to keep this idea in mind it may make sense for you to not castle so soon could you get away with playing f6 here you certainly can let's say similar moves were played in the game and we go for this maneuver you may have to flick in some different move here this is a spot where white could maybe give a check and there's going to be a problem you may have to flick this move in but you could still maybe hint at a different deployment for the bishop. Queen d7 and castles, that too can be an effective plan. It's something to keep in mind. You may find castling queenside is a good idea, so at least give yourself the option to do just that. You may find yourself, you may find that you save yourself a move or five. Anyhow, some food for thought. Feel free, as usual, to leave any feedback to this video in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed it and maybe took a thing or two away. That's all for now. Take care.